A bit of housekeeping, uh, we will start with a live section which has no embargo, followed by an embargo section of 10.30pm tonight. Please raise your hand if you'd like to ask a question, we'll come to everyone in turn. And uh, please remain on mute if you're not asking a question. So we'll start with a live section and we will start with Michael Bridge from Sky, please. No, no. Hello, Michael. Hi. Um, many changes last night, um, to be expected. Um, but there was a mixture. Some were first team players. Were there disappointing performances from those first first team players? No, no. We have to be, um, how I say, um, fair, fair to to the judgment that we have on the performance yesterday. There were good things. There were bad things. But bad things um, that we have to analyze. I already saw the game, so we analyze. There were. Um, Situations that he has to do with the with the team, not individual. It has to do with the process. It has to do with players that um, it was the first game that they they play for for Spurs. Um, players that arrive later, uh, young players. So all these things we have to be very fair on the judgment that we we make on the players. Um, but the the decision was made because we need all the players to to step up and increase the, the levels of fitness because we're going to need all the players in, in, the, um, in the future, in the near future. Nuno, I saw you on Sunday, I was in the stadium and you actually looked genuinely emotional at the reaction you got from Spurs fans on Sunday against City. What will it be like for you to go back to Molyneux? Well, it's going to be special. Uh, of course, it's going to be special. There were... Four years of, of hard work, four years that uh, amazing, and the fans, the Wolves fans were so supportive and so so good to us that um, it's only love and respect that I have um, for the club, for the fans, for the players there, for the staff. Uh, because, like I said, it was four years of our life that uh, we were together. Harry Kane's trained all week. Will he be back in your squad to face Wolves? He trained today. He trained today. He trained good. Um, he's going to train tomorrow and tomorrow we're going to make a decision. I'm so sorry to keep on saying the same things, but this is how we, we work. Um, it's a day-by-day -day situation. The decisions are made when we feel that we should make them, make them and we're going to take the decision who's going to travel tomorrow. You know, like you say, day-by-day, day, it feels a bit unfair on you because... You want to build a squad. You want to build a strong team here. You want to know what strikers you're going to have. Does there need to be a resolution here? We don't want to. We don't want this to drag till, till deadline day. But honestly, Michael, um, it's not unfair for me or fair. It's the it's the reality, and the reality needs needs to be taken care of with uh, wise decisions. And uh, the decision that we make, we go day by day, and we. All the players that are involved in training session are options for us. Thanks, Nuno. So the squad is the squad. Thanks, Nuno. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. We'll go to Jonathan Overend for PLP, please. Hi, Nuno. Um, Hello. Your, your visit to Wolves, no one knows Wolves better than yourself. What, what's the best way to play Wolves, your former club? I don't agree with you. In this moment, it's not. It's not. I'm not the the more uh, the one that knows Wolves better. Bruno is the one that knows Wolves better. I know very good Tottenham Hotspur squad. So what we expect is a tough match because we're going to face a tough opponent. What have you learned the most? You've only been in in the job such a short time, but what do you feel you've learned the most in those few weeks? It's not uh, that I learn, it's that I realize that we need uh, to work very hard because the expectations and uh, the standards are very high. So we will require all that we have, all, all that we have, the best, the best. This is what I have learned. Every day we need to, to, to improve. Do, do you see a squad that has a variety of different ways of playing? Nuno, will, will there be multiple systems that you will use with this group of players? We are building our own idea, but I don't see a variety of, of systems because the idea is always the same. It's to be compact, to be solid, take advantage of the talent that we have. So we are building, and, but I truly believe that uh, 
routines creates habits and habits transform into character and we want to build this character so we'll stick with the with the same ideas that we show from the previous game i think we did a fantastic job against city not so good yesterday that give us the chance to realize with the mistakes that we make but we stick to our own ideas and just finally from me how much personally are you being kept up to date with the the situation regarding harry every day every day thank you thanks john thanks thank jonathan you. uh ian abraham some talk sport please hi nuno how are you i'm okay Ian. nice to see you and you can i ask what reception you are hoping to get or you expect to get from the Wolves fans on Sunday? I don't know. I don't know. I will go there with focus on my job, but with a lot of respect when I enter Molino, because like I said, it was four years of our life that were huge for everybody. So on my part, I will go there, like I say, focus on my, on my task, but with a smile on my face. I'm sure they'll be respectful to you as well. Um, as you've seen in the last week at Spurs, you go from great wins to the club being in crisis, the win over City to last night being in crisis. Is that very hard to manage when there's no kind of like middle ground? It's either everything's fantastic or, as I say, you're in a crisis. It's not hard because it's reality. And I'm, I'm so used to to ups and downs, not only in football, but in life, that I deal pretty well with this situation. And I think the players also, the players also must realize that this is football and football gives you a chance to, to put things right. And tomorrow, Sunday, we have a chance to put things right and recover the good mood. You're obviously going to decide about Harry Kane and whether he plays on Sunday nearer to the time. Can I ask you about the importance of Hummin Son, whether Kane stays or whether Kane goes? How important this season is Sonny to Spurs? Sonny is a very talented player, um, a player that uh, is happy, so it's good to have him. But uh, not only Sonny, all the players, all the players are very important for us, very important. Uh, because uh, the competition is a cycle, it's a cycle. So we have to realize that um, players that play now, maybe they decrease, we need someone to go again. And so all the players, it's not individually um, players, it's all the squad, and they know that. And my last question, um, I've spoken this morning to Mikel Arteta, Rafa Benitez and Thomas Tuchel already, um, and, and they've all had problems of, with COVID in their club, affecting players who, who can't play or couldn't play last weekend and may not be able to play this weekend. How much do we need to remember that although we've got full stadiums and although football is back and, and looks really normal compared to what it was uh, during the pandemic. Actually, we need to be careful and maybe advise your players not to go into the crowd if they score a goal or to get vaccinated. I mean, just talk to us about that. Yeah, the pandemic is still is still with us and we are learning to live with that. But I think the vaccine is, the, um, I respect all the, um, the personal choices. I think each one of, one of us should decide, but I'm, I'm in favor of the vaccine and I should all the players to get the vaccine that, um, that allowed maybe this freedom of, of when the players want to celebrate. Maybe it doesn't mean that you are, you are totally out of, of contracting the virus, but it gives you more safety. So I'm, I'm truly in favor of the vaccines, but to control the, now that fans are back, it's very difficult to control the emotions of the players. If they score, if they want to go in the crowd, how can you stop it? Yes, Nuno. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Thank Thanks, you. Ian. Uh, Alistair Gold, please. Hello again, Nuno. How are you? Hello. Well, you're right. Um, can you're right very late. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Um, how was Christian Romero feeling after his kind of first full 90 minutes? He looked like towards the end of the game he was maybe holding his knee a bit and having a bit of pain with it. Yeah, I think it was due to fatigue. Due to fatigue. Um, it was his first game um, in a while. He played 90 minutes intense. 
um, sec the first half, but sec especially the second half, where we were unbalanced, that were they required a lot of of situation from our defenders. Um, but I think it was due to fatigue. He's, he's well today. Uh, he's recovering and taking the normal procedure. But he's okay. And, and can I just ask you? I think I understand Ian Cathro uh, stayed back in the UK to train the players that were here. Is that something yeah. you're going to do going forward if you progress into the group stages? No, I, I don't know. I don't know that. I don't know that. The decision was made basically because, look, uh, I think you arrive also very late. Uh, I arrive at four o'clock in the morning, so I think I didn't sleep. So if I have to prepare the game, um, if I'm a football player and I have to prepare the game like we did today, uh, with three or four hours of sleep would not be the, the best way. So Ian had a, new, a nice uh, night of sleep. <laughs> the players that stay here have a nice night, night of sleep. So this was one of the main reasons, but I don't know uh, for the future. For example, next week we have a, a similar schedule, but we're going to be in the building, we're going to be here. We don't have to, to be eight hours in, in traveling um, in a plane and all these things. So this this um, accumulation of, of traveling produces a lot of fatigue on the players, and that's what we try to avoid. And, and just one last one for me, only because obviously he went off injured as well. Cameron Carter Vickers, how's he doing? Yeah, not good. Unfortunately, not good. Not good. He, he twisted his ankle. He doesn't look good. Okay. Is it? Do you think it's a sprain or, or a severe sprain or, or maybe worse? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna have the the doctor. He's gonna be doing a, a scan and all these things. But it, it doesn't look good. And this is the worst thing that could happen to us. Thank you, Nina. Thanks, Ali. Uh, Rob Ellis from Stats Perform, please. Hi, Nuno. Um, I wanted to ask you about um, Hugo Lloris. Uh, it's his 300th Premier League game for the club this weekend. Um, what have been your impressions of, of Hugo since you joined the club? Um, and where would you put him in terms of the, the best goalkeepers that you've worked with? I think it's a, a fantastic achievement uh, to play 300 games for a club. Uh, it shows the loyalty, it shows the respect. And this is Hugo every day, every day uh, since we arrived. Um, he's been preparing himself. He played a good game against City. He's the captain of the club. So huge achievement. In terms of what you ask, um, I've been fortunate, lucky to, to have a lot of good goalkeepers in our teams. A lot of them, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, Jonathan Veal, please. I don't know. Um, just away from the Harry Kane situation, are you expecting any other players to leave the club before the end of the transfer window? I don't know. I, I cannot answer that. I cannot answer that. You, we all know that with the transfer window open, anything can happen. Okay. Uh, and it's just, just been a week since I asked about Tangay and Dombele. Has his situation changed at all? Is he any closer to perhaps you know, becoming to gain your plans? He was not part of the squad uh, in the conference league because he was not included in the list. Um, but I will be honest with you, no, no need. Um, Tang is not going to be involved on Sunday. OK, and um, just on Joe Roden, obviously he had that injury. Is he going to be fit? Unfortunately, no. No. OK, thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. Time for one more in this section. So, Jerry Cox, please. Hi, Nuno. Are you well? I'm okay, thank you. Thank you. Good. Um, Raul Jimenez is a player you obviously know very well. He got that sickening injury last year. Um, have you been in touch since he returned? He obviously came back into action last week and you'll see him tomorrow. Is he someone you kept in touch with? Yes, uh, yes. First of all, is uh, I'm. I think everybody in football is delighted that Raul is back after that, that situation. And it's so good to see him again and, and playing football. That's the most important part uh, because it was, was really, really serious. And I met him. I met him not, not so long ago. We had a, ten, a chance to, to, to speak. Huge admiration for Raul and I'll be delighted to give him a big hug on Sunday. I, I don't know if you saw the interview last week that he said, uh, you know, people told him he was lucky to be alive. Does that sort of injury... And that situation put, put other things into perspective sometimes when 
you know, fans complain about this and that and, and managers get upset about certain issues. You have to put it in perspective that it can be life or death. We put, we felt it. We felt it. We felt it. When, when, when that happened, everybody felt it. Everybody that was there. And um, the friendship that uh, I have and everybody has with Raul was, was, was very, very traumatic. And like you said, it puts everything in perspective. Like the pandemic puts everything in perspective. We have to enjoy life. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. We'll, uh, we'll move on to the embargoed section now for 10.30 p.m. tonight.